Let's start the demo of Kinertia with Rafael Siriani. So let's go to the demonstration, Kinertia demonstration. So I will just uh, fire up Kinertia. Uh, and I will create uh, a project uh, for a NAF site unit. Uh, so let's go to my data I have here. So it's these three files have been directly downloaded from the NAF site data logger. And here I have all the settings of the NAF site unit. And here I have binary files containing all the IMU, the raw GNS data and all this stuff. And I will just drag and drop the files. And automatically, the tool has detected uh, the files and detected that, that it's a marine application. And let's uh, go to the next panel. So I, in fact, I will mainly just review uh, the data and not change the configuration at all because it was uh, correct in uh, in NAF site unit. So now I have a, a trajectory preview. I can see all the data overlaps and I can also make sure I don't, I don't have any gap, for instance. And let's go ahead. And now I will uh, check and handle all base station stuff. And as you have seen, in, in fact, everything is done in the background. So because I'm talking a lot, we are downloading the base station in the background and all this stuff. So it's why everything is already up to date. So we can see that we have some base station here, but it's quite far from my trajectory. And in this specific situation, we have used a virtual base station. So it's here. I would like for the demonstration to show how easy it is to just get a virtual base station and import it. So it's a Relax file. I just drag and drop. The base station has been detected. Base station has been imported directly. And I can also uh, review some stuff on the base station, such as I can uh, compute the PPP position on it. And in this case, we just set up the correct datum for the base station and launch a PPP computation just to make sure that the base station is correctly located. And I see that it's quite consistent with the published position. I have uh, just five centimeters of uh, drift be between uh, my PPP check and the published position. And let's go ahead and oh yeah I have uh, in this base station on purpose I have a sort of uh, coverage issue as you can see here my base station is not covering all my recording so I can just very easily adjust what I would like to do and in this case I will also take the opportunity to, to maybe remove uh, the beginning of the log because we were docked here and it's not of use so I will remove a part of the log and that's it okay I have cropped my log and go ahead. So now it's an horizon that has been selected automatically. Everything is, uh, the whole alignment has been read from the unit itself, all the lever arms. So here we see that we have this antenna, we have uh, the main and secondary lever arms that has, have been directly read from the unit. And just uh, go ahead and uh, start looking at the data. So now we are looking at the real-time data out of the unit. So in yellow, you see, in fact, uh, the GNSS, uh, real-time GNSS solution, that is uh, ATK uh, solution, uh, unless you have some OTGs and uh, multipath effects, such as you can see here. And we can uh, assess very accurately the uh, real-time solution, for instance. So now I'm playing uh, the real-time solution, and you see uh, here the INS trajectory with uh, the uh, quality indicated using a uh, green to red color code. And you see the genesis itself that is completely uh, going crazy because of all the multipath due to the metallic bridges. So yeah, it gives you some example of how easy it is to access and assess quality. We can uh, very easily check the accuracy and everything on the genesis as well. So let's directly start uh, processing so we you can see here i have all my settings i can tune them if needed but i don't need uh, in this case just launch the tightly coupled solution so now we are starting the processing here it's a pre-processing and you will see that we will do at the same time a forward computation here as well as a backward computation here and then we will merge both computations uh, to get the best results uh, in all the cases. So, in fact, the idea is that when we do a forward computation, the quality will be very nice when we enter the bridge, but it will be uh, the worst accuracy will be at the exit of the bridge because we will drift during the whole bridge. 
But in the backward direction, it will be the exact opposite. It will be nice at this area and worse here. And thanks to the backward, forward and merge solution, in fact, we will get a very accurate result here, very accurate here. And in fact, it will be in the middle of the bridge that we will get the least, the least accurate position. So the processing is done. It was a one hour log. As you can see, it took us uh, less than one minute to, to do a full tightly coupled INS solution. So it's very, very fast processing. It's because we use a very uh, modern architecture with uh, multi-core support and all this stuff. And now we can just uh, review the quality of the processing and, and check some data. So we can see here that we have some pure inertial data. It's mainly uh, under the bridges. And I can switch the display here to check the position type. And I can see here that I have RTK fix, RTK float, inertial only, RTK float, RTK fix solution. Because uh, under the bridge, of course, we just rely on the IMU data. And here we can have some nice uh, quality assessment. So in this case, it's uh, the horizon unit. And you see that uh, we have uh, both in terms of estimated accuracy as well as in terms of separation, a very, very accurate role pitch, uh, heading information, the same for position. And I can even uh, speak up a specific area. So I can do it here, for instance, or I can do it directly in, the, in, this, in this part. I can pick up some area and say, OK, I would like to analyze just this area, define as analysis. And I can check on this area only uh, the estimated accuracy, the separation. So the separation is the discrepancy between the forward computation and the backward computation. And we see that in this area, uh, we have a very, very uh, accurate uh, result. We also have a lot of different uh, tools to help uh, assess the quality, such as a lot of curves. We can check the gyroscope bias. We can check. Uh, we can check the genesis data in real time. We can have the chip, the ship motion data, a surge, heave, sway, all this stuff. Uh, we can, uh, of course, check the altitude as well. So as you can see, we have a lot of different uh, tools and curves. Uh, we can stack the curves, so it's very convenient. And we can also look uh, at the real time data side by side by side and do some uh, side by side comparison, such as in this area. I can play the data and you will see that uh, I have uh, here the post-processed uh, on the left uh, and the real-time solution on the right. And we see uh, that the post-processed solution is much more accurate. Uh, we are using the same color code convention and you see clearly the benefits uh, from uh, the post-processing. And here I can check the gyroscope bias and and see that the gyroscope bias are super stable and super accurate. Uh, 0.02 degrees per hour of bias. It's uh, very, uh, very nice uh, for guiding this one. The final step will be uh, exporting the data. So it's quite convenient. File, export, and we can create as much profile, export profile that we would like and uh, do a lot of stuff such as uh, export on uh, time-based export, epoch-based, uh, event-based. It's used uh, if you have some uh, LiDAR cameras and all this stuff sometimes. I can say, okay, I would like only ATK fixed uh, solution or PPP fixed solution. And I can create my own uh, text file format uh, just by drag and dropping some uh, tags and uh, setting up uh, everything on each field. So it's uh, very, very convenient and straightforward. And then I will export the data. And that's it. I open the exported data. And here we go, we have all the, the data we, we wanted to export. Uh, finally, we can also uh, do some uh, GNSS only computation, such as this one. I will just fire up a GNSS only computation. So we will not uh, use the IMU data, but just do the GNSS computation. As you can see, uh, because it's a GNSS only, we will have some uh, holes here. But we see that we have improved a lot uh, the RTK availability. In this area, we don't have RTK for the real-time genesis. But here, we have the RTK fixed here. So we improve a lot also the uh, real-time genesis receiver. It's the case here, you can see as well. And uh, last option also is to do PPP computation, either genesis only or uh, for the uh, INS post-process PPP.
So now, just very quickly, I will also show you a third-party IMU uh, project. I have, I'm have i running out of time, so I will have to do it very quickly. So VID for third-party IMUs, we have de defined and we uh, provide publicly uh, either a binary file or a text file, uh, so you can uh, import a, a raw genesis, um, a raw IMU data, sorry, and the genesis data, in fact, we support directly building uh, a lot of uh, manufacturers such as Trimble, Septon Trio, uh, Novatel, uh, Ublocks, uh, latest uh, Genesis receivers, and all other manufacturers are supported through uh, Rhinex uh, two or three versions. And uh, the idea with third-party IMU support is to uh, provide you this uh, very simple uh, text file that you can uh, create from uh, any uh, tool. And uh, then uh, you provide the lever arms and all the stuff. So with Kinasha, it's very straightforward. You just have to drag and drop the file. We check all the data we have uh, been able to read. And then uh, let's go ahead. It's quite the same workflow as uh, the one uh, we have with our, our units. And in this case, it's logged in Japan with uh, MEMS IMU from Northrop Grumman. And everything is read from uh, the file, as you can see. The alignment, uh, the lever arms, and all the stuff. So very, very easy. And I can fire up quite quickly uh, computation on it. So in this case, I, I don't have uh, real time uh, RTK data. It's just as bad. So it's why everything is in red because I just uh, triggered a loosely coupled solution. So I will not recompute the. Genesis data uh, in a tightly coupled manner, but just use the Genesis PVT data and do the computation. So that's it. I, I have to hurry up because the time is is running. Uh, so what we have seen is that uh, uh, Kinasha is a very easy and straightforward tool uh, to do post-processing jobs uh, with cutting edge tightly coupled algorithm. So it's uh, really the, the most important point. Uh, it's in-house tightly coupled INS and Genesis algorithm that are running in Kinasha and delivering amazing results. Uh, we also provide Genesis only at TK PPP, so you can do any type of jobs you would like to do. Uh, the lever arm calibration module didn't have any, enough time to showcase it, but it's a very nice tool to uh, assess uh, the lever arms uh, quality you measurement. A lot of quality assessment tools, third body IMU support. So thanks to one tool, you can uh, do all your jobs. You don't have to pay for different tools and formation and, uh, and training and the rest of, uh, type of uh, stuff. And finally, uh, we have a very powerful export uh, system. So you can directly export in SBED files if you are used to this type of files and uh, integrate the data in any type of uh, software such as uh, HiPack, uh, Chimera, uh, and all, uh, all this type of uh, software. So thank you very much. And uh, if you have any questions, please feel free. And I will give the hand back to uh, Noemi.